welcome to the Understanding Projects podcast. My discussion today is with Pawen Premi. This is her second appearance on the podcast. Pawen has extensive experience in areas including design engineering, project management, and product management. She also holds a PNG, PMP, and MBA. In our discussion today, we talk about the concept of white space project management. Those new to the project management field sometimes view managing projects as merely coordinating different activities that occur during the project, but otherwise take a fairly passive role. This may also be referred to as a project coordinator role. However, many experienced project managers realize that they need to play a more active role in the project by being the person who brings the different team members and areas of the organization together in order to complete the project. In effect, they are often the one who connects the dots. As Pawen explains, on a printed page, the white space between words connect the ideas and allows for the reader to better understand the concepts being communicated. This is what a white space project manager does being that person who provides connections and actively guides the overall project. Here is Pawen Premi. So a term that, um, that uh, is uh, present in our discussions, we've had talks about the concept of white space project management. Uh, so that's a, that's an interesting term. And, and so uh, I guess my first question is, where does that term come from? What What is white, uh, white space project management? So the, in earlier texts, um, I don't know if you have ever seen uh, some of the religious books, they used to have all the letters connected together. So not just the letters, but the words were also connected. And one of the reasons behind it was, uh, you know, the binding of the book required, you know, a lot of effort. So they wanted to fit as much possible on a book. However, very soon after that, people realized that then reading becomes very difficult. And it was, you know, chosen few who could read the text. So the white space came from that idea that between every word give that intentional white space so that it makes the flow better. And this is how white space management or white space project management also came into the being where sometimes between different tasks, you want that white space either to bridge the two tasks that are happening or uh, it could be unintentional where um, there is a gap and you need to do something about it. So that's where white space concept comes in. So when we have the textbooks, we have different lines or different words or different paragraphs, and each seem to have slightly different white space, and each one serves the different purpose. I love hearing about the history of how terminology comes from. I wasn't aware that uh, early texts um, crowded their words together. That must have been very tough to <laughs> to try to be able to read that. So I could, I, I, that's interesting the way um, it, it came into being. So um, so then what, how does white space, like what, what, what is the, what, what is the, the transition then to white space project management? How does that, what, what is the relationship to that, to the textbook or the book uh, situation? So similar to, textbook where you have um, white space between the words. So it could be two different tasks. So let me take an example where um, you have your server-side designer, DevOps team member, he's creating something, he's creating the UI and you have the UX or the UI designer that has his own idea about what the UI needs to look like. However, the UI designer may not understand what type of time series or static data it is, and that the DevOps team member may not be able to display it the way the UI member is looking for. 
So there is a gap of either knowledge or there is a gap of understanding or somebody who needs to bridge that gap. And wide space project man management comes into play where a project manager comes into that role and he has to, he or she has to own that space, that gap to help bridge the understanding of one person to the next person. And it could be not just the person, it could be the whole team, or it could be stakeholders, or it could be the project task as well, right? So it could be different levels where white space is not being managed and you need to get in there and manage it. Yeah, so that is that is so interesting. Um that you're right. I mean, when you when you um, you know put these tasks onto a Gantt chart and draw an arrow between them, it's kind of seems very clean and precise. And well, this person does it, and then it moves to that person. And it seems so um, you know efficient to do it that way, but it's not real life. In, in real life, like you say, they there might be misunderstandings between them. They might not be communicating effectively, and so there is this sort of um, you know, kind of other work that's going on that is not acknowledged is that, and, and so it's interesting that a, you know, a term has been put on it in a, in a role that somebody is, is managing that white space. It's not, if, if left to be accidental, it probably wouldn't happen. Right, right. And white space projects also exist where the company may not have put in resources or they may not have thought about that project or that uh, process that is needed and they may not have the resources for it. It could be completely unplanned. And then you, as you are working on the project, you realize I'm missing this component, right? right. An experienced organization might have a solution already for it, but you may not realize while you, during the process and that's when you have to manage it I don't have the resources I don't have the time to put this in somewhere how do I manage this and where do I get my resources from where do I get my funding from and how do I fit it into my time maybe I'm hiring external contractors to get it done right so right. it could be white space project as well something that the company didn't plan for but we want to venture out and see if there's an opportunity there. Right. So as a, you, you mentioned there's various ways to, to address the white space, but one way is, is through a person or a project manager who will manage or address that white space, will we'll fill it, support, I don't know if you fill it, but you, you, um, you know, manage that white space to make sure that things are moving effectively. So, you know, I assume that that is the type of role that a project manager could do. Absolutely. And I think I had previously mentioned that sometimes when we read these different project management books and we read about how the project manager's role is not about hands-on work, but for white space project management, I repeatedly find that you have to be that person who's able to own that gap, at least for the short term, until you find a resource to bridge that gap, right? right. So right. Um, as a project manager, you need to know what your end-to-end -end system is, what the different needs are, and how you are going to make sure each aspect is covered. Yeah, this is this is actually from a, you know, um, it, it's interesting because uh, in in my estimation, there are you know, a couple of different camps of, of project managers, you know, maybe more than two, but at least two main ones, which are the, you know, the ones that the project managers that will define the plan and then sort of step back and just manage the, the over-unders, the what's late, what's, what's on time, uh, sort of, sort of thing, more the coordination aspect. And then you have the camp, which is the roll up the sleeves and, you know, uh, get things done, you know, ensure that the connections are made, which I would then assume that would be the white space, the, the white space project managers would would fit into that. And so, it, so it's kind of liberating to have a name 
for that for that group. So it's it's actually it's actually good because I would see myself belonging to that camp in terms of my project management experience. Um, and it also kind of, um, in my experience, there was often there was often this this awkward moment with with customers. Or sponsors where you kind of said, okay, here's all the resource costs of the developers and the analysts and the, you know, QA and so on. And then here's the project management time. And then often you get the, the looks kind of like, well, what, what's that? What's that 15%, you know, that overhead, you know, or whatever the percentage was there, there's different schools of thought of how much project management, but it's not zero. It's not, it's not tiny. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not just a, a few days or a little bit of time. And so oftentimes there was this needing to convince um, customers or project sponsors as to the value of that. And this puts it in a certain context where you'd say, well, the role they're playing is to connect those dots, is to manage that white space because, you know, um, uh, developers and business analysts don't always talk to each other, you know, or, or, you know, they don't always talk to the customer all that well, you know, and, and so you have all these communication gaps and misfires, the processes don't always work effectively, and, and somebody's got the big holistic picture, and, and that's that person who's managing the white space, so it's, it's a, it's, it's sort of an unsung role, but it's good to see that it's got some, it, it has some exposure. Yeah, and again, I agree with you, because People sometimes call it the thankless job, right? It's the small little part that you have to do. And sometimes they go unnoticed because if you're doing your job so well, you're bridging everything, everything's flowing easy. It's like, what are you doing? That type of thing. And that's why I believe that managing the white space projects is a very difficult task and truly becomes possible if you have good leadership who understands and who value the change, who yeah. value that uh, these small tasks are needed and that if you're spending time on these tasks, you are going to learn something and eventually you are going to improve the process or bring forward that business opportunity um, that was, you know, just in your white space and not in your black space operations. Right, right. Um, and, I, and I've often often detected it as well uh, on projects that I've been involved in. This goes back, way back. So, you know, for example, I use a systems uh, example where, you know, oftentimes if there's a problem, it would depend upon which group you went to as to what their solution was, you know, because they all were in their own little camp, you know, for example, if you went to the web based team, they give you a web solution. If you went to the, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the uh, um, let's say the uh, main processor, the mainframe team from, a, you know, for, for big financial institutions and so on, that would be their solution. Um, and if you went to a you know, mobile device, the, the, the mobile team, they would create a mobile, like everybody had a, their, 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 their solution was whatever tool they used. And there was all, there was, there was, there was a type of role, oftentimes the project manager who was sort of above that and was looking at the business need and was saying, well, okay, I get all these things, but let's get these people talking to each other and figure out the best solution now, as opposed to the one that they know. And that that to me seems like it would be something that would fit into your into your uh, into your example and definition of a white space project manager. Absolutely. Again, uh, excellent analogy about you know the systems and how everyone is thinking about their own solution to be the best solution. Um, I would say that uh, um, working in the telecom industry and the mobile industry. I have learned a few things where people have, um, and they're really good at their own jobs, but if they don't have that big picture in mind, then their solution could be the worst solution to the problem if that's not the right solution to the end customer, right? So independently, I have seen um, as a product manager, I was working on some of the features that we were uh, trying to enhance for our customer. The response from our dev team 
were absolutely correct if you looked into you know what they were saying this is how it's going to happen this is because that was the usual way of doing things and that's how we were doing it for majority of our customers however in this particular case there was a slight difference and we were using the same feature but we renamed it to something else so the person you know devops team is replying correctly the customer thought getting that information directly from the source, best thing, but because there was no context to say how the customer was using that particular feature, the answers become incorrect, right? right. And that's why you need that bridge to make sure even the flow of information from the customer to the, your design team or vice versa uh, is properly managed to say this is the configuration we are using this product in so make sure that you are looking at those details not just how we usually do things right how do you find acceptance of this concept is like is this something that's visible to your to your clients customers project sponsors do they um like do they see this cost is a question because I mean the the person doing this has a has a cost right they'll they'll be charging back to the project and so on and it's it's non sort of non-traditional in terms of it's not a specific they don't have a specific role that they're the so-and-so engineer or software developer they're this this project manager that's floating above and connecting the dots is is how do you find do you need to sell it or or is it something that is is generally uh, accepted um, I would say in our experience, what happened was we had this two to three years of relationship with the customer. It was going well, right? Yeah. And then we decided to have this specific person, you know, managing that white space put on to the project. Within the first three months, the customer feedback was that they were truly benefiting from this relationship because the earlier miscommunications or misconfiguration of the devices or the information not reaching to the right customer party was a big issue. Whereas now, when that person who is fully engaged with the customer understand what they need and then taking that information from the design and development team and providing that information uh, became a positive point. They were the ones who were uh, recommending that they don't want to lose this person. They want to have this person on their project full time, making sure their needs were being met. So I think it's the positive experience of the customers that sells white space project management. Right. Yeah. And and that's a really good point that, you know, it's sort of like the uh, the old, the, the proof is in the pudding um, sort of thing is that you've got to, you know, kind of you know, the event, the advantage, the value of stakeholder relationships and trust. And, you know, this, I'm, this is if they trust you that this is, this is a good approach to go, they will proceed. And then when they start seeing the benefits and they start comparing it to other projects and, you know, maybe uh, teams that have not had this and all the hassles and miscommunications and, you know, phone calls that aren't returned and things like all of those frustrations if they see that go away or even just reduced with with this approach then they they will just say okay i want more of this you know like you know i don't 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 tell me about the cost i just want it you know sort of because i you know realize you know ultimately something like this if you're reducing miscommunications errors you're getting better solutions it, it ultimately should reduce the cost like it should be a net reduction rather than it's not like sometimes we refer to this as overhead which implies that it is completely on top of the other stuff. But okay. in reality, if it's done well, and it's done effectively by really effective people doing the role, it should reduce the other costs by the amount of the overhead, you know, so that that's the goal. Exactly. And when the customer sees that, they are the one, you know, rooting for it. Right. And, and I just, I look at it just from a, you know, part of it's me is that when I was managing projects, I didn't want to just be, you know, to, to, you know, use the pushing a pencil, you know, to say, okay, uh, what, how'd you do, you know, Hey, team member, 
how'd you do in this task? Oh, you're a little late. Okay. And then you're a little ahead and then just updating a project schedule. And that, that's all I did. Doesn't seem like much of a role. Like it's not to, I, I'm not trying to, you know, there, there, there is validity in, in, um, you know, there's a, it's a, it, it's a, it's required that we keep track of where things are, but that can't, in terms of my own opinion or my own career, that was never enough that I wanted to get involved, understand, be able to help shape decisions, help get three or four people in a room and hammer out a decision. That's real value added to, to do what's needed. And I would say as a project manager, if you are truly involved in every aspect of the project, you are meeting with the customers, you are talking to the stakeholders, you are providing updates to your leadership teams, you are working with the development team to make sure the tasks are happening on the time. Now, when you are exposed to every communication, if you are retaining that information yourself, you are bound to be more effective at to the team because now you can help them, you know, remind what the configuration needs to be for this customer. Or you can tell them, uh, last time, this is what we discussed. As a project manager, you are also writing down your notes or you are sharing, you know, your smart sheets or you are sharing your meeting points. So you have the most um, powerful role, I would say, in a project because you have an understanding and you have that ability to understand each level and talk to these people or communicate with the stakeholders, internal or external, and make it an effective uh, project strategy to make sure everyone is getting what they need. Yeah, and, and I think that's why it's 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 not an easy role because just what you described there, like just even just if we if we went back through the, the the two or three sentences you just described, there would be, you know, a high level of communication skills required. You'd have to have good stakeholder management and empathy. You'd need a good sense of the business strategy. You need to understand, you know, be able to understand your customer and your client and the business. You'd need to be able to talk to technical resources, you know one minute and business, you know, senior management, the next, you know, so you need a wide range. So it is a highly skilled role, uh, but it is one that is very rewarding, um, you know, to be in. And it's also very rewarded in terms of, of, of compensation and opportunity and so on and experience. So it's, so it's certainly a, it's certainly a, a you know, a, a, uh, it's a good career path for people to to think about and you know it, it's also just something that's it's hard to replace like I, I found I found that this is a type of a role that's difficult to outsource it's difficult to like it, it's like you say once customers once once organizations detect it they want to keep that person like they they, right. they you know it's it's not everybody can do it so there's sort of a oh okay keep that person happy, you know, like that, that person gets, the, it's the person who gets things done, you know, because they, they, they find solutions to, to issues. And I would say the person who can stick into this role is truly a good communicator. Right. That's the only way you can survive. You need to have that respect of your fellow workers as well. Uh, because if you have that understanding, um, you can direct the project in the right direction. And if you lack in that ability to communicate what was said and what needs to be done, then you have lost your effectiveness right then and there. I would say uh, to your point that uh, it is a very rewarding um, career option. Also, I want to say, if you like being challenged every day, it is that role because every single day I go to work, I feel like it's a new day. It's different set of tasks that I'm doing from the previous day, and it could be completely different, right? And it's uh, one day I'm meeting the customer, trying to gather their requirements, and the next day I'm deep involved with the developers, telling them, no, 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 I want this in my feature. I want this to be done for the UI. So it gives you that ability to explore whichever way you want to go to, and. Uh, 
get that system level understanding of things. Yes, yes. No, I, I, I know exactly of what you speak of. And I've often described, you know, that's one of the things that I value about this, this role is that, like you say, one day you're, you know, pouring over a budget with the CFO or the financial area. And the next day you're, 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 you know, looking at the user interface with the developers. And the next day you're, you're talking to a, to a senior manager in terms of, you know, the, the, uh, the overall strategy of the project or of the organization. So it's, so it's, it's a, it, it's good for people that want that challenge and that diversity in, in what they do in their, in their everyday life. So, so that's in everyday life of your career. So um, anyways, this has been a great discussion. I love the terminology of white space project management. It's, it's uh, I, I think really descriptive and indicates a really key role and a, and a really good and, and a really good aspect of, of project management that, that really highlights the value of it, you know, uh, that, that it, it, it itself is a big part of what project managers and project management does. So it's good that it has that exposure. So I thank you for your discussion about it. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, well, thanks again. Thank you. That's it for this episode. If you would like to learn more about project management, you can find my book, Understanding Project Management, A Practical Guide on Amazon. Please also consider following Understanding Projects on your favorite podcast player or clicking subscribe on YouTube.